Welcome back to the Planet Stage. I hope you're all enjoying the COGX Hybrid Festival 2021. We've had some great sessions already today. We've covered how COP26 can raise climate ambition, how we can ramp up the fight against deforestation, how the economics of biodiversity and the possibilities of technology can protect nature and about the future of food. For those of you just joining us, you can tweet us at, at COGX underscore festival or use the hashtag COGX 2021. Next, we're going to turn to an industry which is always on trend and discuss how fashion can help create a better world. The Fashion Avengers, a global goals initiative brought together by Project Everyone, combines disruptors, innovators and brands committed to doing exactly that. This session will be moderated by Sarah Vaughan, the Global Purpose and Sustainability Advisor at Marie Claire. Sarah, over to you. Thanks so much and welcome everyone. It's so brilliant to have you all with us. Uh, and in this session, we're going to discover how the fashion industry can create a better world. So, the, as a background, the United Nations Global Goals are the world's ultimate to-do list. But what if they were also the key to helping the $2.5 trillion fashion industry change for the better? We're here to meet the Fashion Avengers, a Global Goals initiative brought together by Project Everyone disruptors, innovators, brands, and now team players committed to doing exactly that. How exciting. And I'm delighted to welcome my panelists. So um, I'm going to invite them on one by one to introduce themselves. Sarah, would you like to join us? Yes. Hello. Thank you very much, Sarah. I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Sarah Kadish Chevalier. I'm a campaigns manager at Project Everyone. We are a non-for-profit creative communications agency focused on raising awareness, inspiring action and driving accountability for the United Nations Global Goals. I work across um, all of our climate, nature and ocean campaigns. And more recently, um, I uh, am now leading uh, the newly launched uh, Fashion Avengers initiative. Um, and I'll leave it at that because I know we'll be talking about it in a moment. Fantastic. Thanks so much. And Cameron. Now, Cameron's joining us from Somerset on a slightly dodgy uh, internet, but, but we're hoping he's going to stay with us for the whole session. Hi, Cameron. Hi, Sarah. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. And yeah, I apologise for the um, potentially wobbly uh, Somerset Wi-Fi. Um, but um, I'm Cameron Saul, and I'm the co-founder of a British sustainable luxury brand called Bottle Top. Uh, we manufacture our collection of handbags and accessories. We just lost you there, Karen. So I think you'll come back and maybe we might have to turn your your, your camera off. But uh, Bottle Top um, manufacture the most extraordinary luxury accessories and we're delighted to have Cameron on board. I think that the G7 is gobbling his internet uh, over, over there in Cornwall. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I'm delighted to have and introduce Noella. I'm Noela Kosaris Musunka, I'm a mother, international model, and founder of Malaika, a non-profit organization that is based in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I lead Malaika at every level on a volunteer basis. I'm a philanthropist and an ambassador for the Global Fund to fight against AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria. And I'm dedicated to hugely raising awareness of the importance to educate girls across the globe. We know that more than 50 million girls in sub-Saharan Africa out of school, that uh, more than 11 million girls who are being threatened from going back to school after COVID-19. So we have big numbers to tackle and to really push government policymakers to really invest heavily in education um, for girls. Wonderful, thank you, uh, Noella. And I think Cameron will be rejoining us uh, shortly. So Sarah, over to you first. Tell, tell us like, why is Project Everyone taking on fashion? Um, and how did the Fashion Avengers come about? I mean, how could we not focus on fashion? Uh, you know, as, as, as you mentioned, it's, it's a huge industry. Um, and I guess it's not a secret for anyone anymore that it's also one of the most polluting industries in the world. And like other sectors with complex supply chains, it also suffers from a lack of 
transparency, which means that unethical production practices can easily go unchecked, um, and most often, more often than not, they do. Um, and I guess where where we come in as Project Everyone is we felt it was really interesting that fashion is actually one of the very few industries that intersects across all 17 global goals. Um, so whether you're talking about waste or biodiversity or gender equality or innovation, um, in reality, there's, is, there isn't any, a single SDG that isn't impacted or impacts fashion. Um, on the other hand, and despite this, uh, fashion as an industry is actually one of the least active in adopting the goals. Uh, and that's especially striking when, when looking at the rest of the private sector, which has very much been key in driving progress um, and action on the goals since 2015. Um, and of course, that doesn't mean that nothing has happened. And we, of course, acknowledge that there has been a lot of work done and a lot of efforts. Um, but the reality is that the, the negative impact, the human and, and environmental impact of the industry has continued to grow in scale and in complexity for many years now. Um, and we think that it's time to try something a bit different. Uh, we think that fashion needs a new plan. And lucky, lucky for us, the world already has a plan and this is the global goals. Um, and that's how the Fashion Avengers initiative came came to life, where we're, we're looking to, where we're bringing leading industry forces together to drive positive change as framed by the goals. And we, we really think that the industry has so much to learn from them. Um, and the goals have to have the potential to be a guiding force, uh, both as a roadmap to help the sector sort of move in the right direction, but also as a communication tool so that sustainability is actually accessible to everyone. Um, I'm sure I'm not the, the only one um, on the panel who thinks that it's absolutely crazy. We don't have a definition of sustainability in the context of the apparel industry. Um, I mean, you know, that means that the, the, the action, the steps taken, the language, the metrics used to, you know, communicate around sustainability massively differ from one organization to the next, which of course is, is really confusing for the brands, but equally really confusing for the consumers. Um, so, so that's what, what we're trying to, hoping to change with, with Fashion Avengers. Which is so exciting. Thank you. And, you know, there are several bodies already which are uniting the fashion industry in various kind of ethical uh, initiatives. How is the fashion event just different from other initiatives? Um, yeah, I mean, totally agree with you. There are a number of great um, fashion initiatives out there um, looking at circularity, labour, ocean pollution. There's, there's so, there are so many of them out there that are doing a great work and we're most definitely not trying to duplicate efforts here. Um, I think we, we often say that we're, we're not fashion experts, we're, we're goals experts and I think that's how we can help and that's what makes us a bit different. Um, I remember seeing Stella McCartney um, on speak on the panel a few years ago and she was talking about soil and saying that fashion is essentially agriculture and that as a fashion designer she, she was basically a farmer and that blew my mind um, because it makes so much sense it's you know the fashion industry doesn't exist in a vacuum and the, the, the challenges that it faces are are very complex and I think that it can only be solved with if the industry is willing to to look beyond itself and you know if you have that in mind is what can the the fashion industry learn from tech what can they learn from agriculture from education from sports industry um, and I think that the goals give give a holistic approach and understanding to, of sustainability that allows new voices to be brought in um, and, and separately, we also found that a lot of initiative focused on the brands, and of course the brands are very important, but the industry is just so much more than that. Um, and so with our Avengers, we try to, to go through all the, to, you know, look for all the corners of the industry and bring a diverse group of leaders in. So of course we're working with brands, and I'm really glad we have Cameron with us today from Bottle Top. We also work with uh, Burberry, Pangaea, we work with creatives, uh, Rankin being one of them, and um, our touch on this a bit later on. He, he was kind enough to shoot our Fashion Avenger campaign a few weeks ago. Uh, we're working with media, Marie Claire, with agencies. So I think we've decided to surround ourselves with those who understand why fashion must change and how the goals can help them get there. 
Um, and the truth is some are already changing the game and others are just getting started. Uh, but I think the, the, the commonality between them is that all of them are willing to try their best uh, to get the industry moving. Um, and that's why the idea of, pro of progress is very is central to, to what we're trying to do. We're all at, we might all be at different points in our sort of sustainability or lesser impact journey. Uh, and we all have very different experiences and, and as such very different roles to play. Um, and I think that becoming a fashion avenger is not a one size fits all linear process. Um, I mean, you know, our, our overall aim with the campaign is, is to get the global goals achieved by 2030. So it's not easy. And I think the only way that we can do it is by working together. And that's why at this call, the Fashion Avengers um, campaign is, is, you know, a network, a collaborative network to engage and nurture partnerships through the goals and for the goals. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, I, I was trying to wear as many bits of Fashion Avengers as I could. I've got my my together band on, I've got my Pangaea uh, t-shirt on. I stopped, <laughs> I stopped at putting my Burberry scarf on because it, it is 26 degrees, so <laughs> forgive me Burberry. Anyway, I'm hoping that Cameron is back. Uh, Cameron, are, 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 you, are you with us? Yes, he is, Hi. fantastic, wonderful. Sarah, for the moment, let's. Um, we, we won't take any, any moments for granted here. Um, but while I'm with you, I'm 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 so happy to be with you. Um, and yeah, I guess really following on from uh, what Sarah was saying there, I think what's so important now is that you know we we we're we're all seeing the unprecedented challenges that we face as individuals, as um, in this case uh, brand owners and designers. Um, and, and I think, if anything, what the pandemic has done acutely is humble all of us to really think about um, what matters most um, and to be, I think, yeah, very, very aware of, of um, the interconnectedness of, of ourselves in these times and how we all have to be thinking and acting differently and we all have to be thinking and acting together. Um, and what is most important is that, is that you are on that journey that you begin that journey whether you are already 20 steps down down the road or you're on, on step one i think it's about taking authentic steps and bringing everybody with you and business has to be the turnkey for change you know i think biz, business is is um what has brought us to this point i think on many levels environmentally and socially and it has to be business that takes the initiative and drives forward. And so as somebody who, who, who runs with a brilliant team, Bottle Top, and our Together Band campaign, um, which is designed to engage people in the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, we were so excited to learn about the Fashion Avengers because I think nothing is going to change unless we, we do so in collaboration and we do so as a coalition. And I think uh, creating um, groups like this where um, certain organizations who are more advanced in their journey with uh, uh, with impact, um, with understanding supply chains and with um, understanding how to speak to their consumers about the goals and about these issues that, that matter so hugely to all of us now. It's about us being able to understand and share best practice. Um, and I think what the goals do brilliantly is a obviously act as a universal route map that everybody can can start to speak that language both as a consumer and as a brand owner um, or even on a governmental level um, but it enables brands to almost self-assess okay what do we care about um, which of the global goals really matter to us and our journey um, and what we do as as a brand and what matters to our consumers um, and how are we going to act in such a way that we can really stand behind those values, that we can stand behind those goals um, and, and start to move, move the needle. Um, so I think, you know, I, I speak as, as someone who runs a, a British sustainable luxury brand um, with a team of uh, 25 of us based in the UK running our operations and our store on Regent Street, um, but with um, over 75 artisans working for women um, amongst the most vulnerable in, in society in Brazil and in Nepal. Um, and we have applied the goals um, 
very, very thoroughly to our to our program. When we first learned about goals in 2015, when they were announced, uh, we, we did our first self-assessment of, of of which goals we were impacting, um, and we were incredibly proud and excited to, to be able to see that we were impacting 12 of the 17 goals mm. directly and another couple of them indirectly. Um, so I think firstly for, for, for brands, it really helps you to understand where you are on, on the journey of, of, of impact um, and to be able to then refine and look strategically about where you're doing really well, where perhaps you need to um, Double down, um, or make you know uh, bigger steps, or or more, um, uh, or, or take a more um, thorough action. Um, and I think it's it's it really creates that um, incredibly powerful program. I mean, we we started Bottle Top with the dual mission back in two thousand and two to create sustainable design, uh, to be able to create product in a way that was kind to planet and was empowering for vulnerable people um, around the world. Um, and so we very much come from this space of how fashion can play a powerful role in driving impact through um, through the supply chain of brands. Um, so we're, we're quite well versed in, in, in the development space. Um, but I think what has changed over time and which is so exciting to see now, and no doubt the framework of the goals has played an enormously important role in that, um, is that any designer today and any brand today, whether they're a, an old heritage brand or whether they're a, a new brand that's being founded by, you know, some incredibly creative young uh, designers, that we have to all have to go beyond um, and we have to think about how we're driving positive impacts and the goals really create that incredible, incredible framework for, for all of us to be able to understand that and to, and to track towards that. They really do. And, and, and Karen, what I, I just love is with Together Band, you've actually made like the global goals like a talking point. So, I mean, the, you know, the fact that you you buy a band, you give it to somebody else, then it, each band represents a goal. I've got I've got my no poverty uh, band on there. It's the red one. And and, and I just Thanks. I just knew which one are you wearing? You've got responsible consumption. Um, I'm I'm, I'm wearing. I'm actually wearing the, the, the green climate action band here as an addition with our with with the the gold plated clasp. They're they're they're, they're very special, um, humble bands in themselves. I mean, uh, uh, friendship bands have forever been a, a beacon of of um, of cause. And so when we learned about the the sustainable development goals back in September 2015, when they were announced um, at the UN. We said, well, what can we do to, to throw our weight behind spreading awareness about the goals, knowing, as Sarah was saying, the the, the incredible, um, impactful communication machine that fashion and creative culture can be. And so we said, well, let's create a product that actually everybody, or as, as many people as possible, can afford um, to wear and to and to help make the framework um, accessible, to help humanize it. Um, and to the center of that, have a very simple invitation to the world to choose the global goal that resonates most with your heart um, and then to share that with someone special to you. And so we designed the Together Bands, which themselves impact um, all of the goals um, in different ways. Um, the color of the, of, the, of the thread, which is made from Parley Ocean plastic, um, is obviously in the color of the goal itself. And, um, and the geni geniuses at um, Project Everyone in the UN came up with the wonderful color palette, which helps make life just a little bit easier for all of us to remember what the different issue areas are. Um, and then the, the clasp is in the shape of the, the, the recycled wrinkle, which is one of our signature materials uh, for the bags and collection that we make. But in this case, all of the clasps of both the big one and the little baby uh, together band for anyone who, who has, uh, has very good uh, eyesight um, can see a made from a legal firearm that's collected from conflict areas in Central America and melted down. Um, over 6,000 uh, illegal firearms have been, been confiscated by our NGO partners um, to make the incredible humanium metal that the band clasps are made from. 
Um, and then 100% of the proceeds from the sales of the bands um, support all of the impact projects that we support uh, that are really at the front end of driving progress towards uh, the achievement and delivery of the goals. Um, but really behind the Together Bands, it's, it's, a, it's a content platform, it's an aware, awareness and education campaign that, that we run to help people um, learn about the goals and, and take action in support of their delivery. And, and as, you, as, you, as you rightly said, it's when you get one, you get another one to share with somebody that you love to really help people find their voice around these issues because we appreciate that it's it's not you know for those of us who aren't coming from the development space or or, or working um you know in in those front lines it's it, this is a whole new language fashion and creative culture can help people to to find their voice and understand and for it to be accessible and exciting and positive and upbeat which we need it to be for sure. Thank you, Karen. Now, Noella, I mean, you are a fashion icon. You're the CEO, founder of an amazing organization, Malaika, which I'm passionate about. You know, when and why did you become concerned about the impact of fashion? You know, what, what, what was your kind of road to Damascus experience there? Well, first of all, I'm very happy to be on this uh, panel because I work a lot with Together Band. <laughs> I'm one of the ambassadors and I was on the shoot of Fashion Avenger. You know, for me, it's very personal. I come from a very rich country, but so poor in what um, we have the most biggest minerals in the world. 60-70% we have the coltan, the cobalt, the lithium. We have all these resources that go on green cars, that go on, on phones, on laptops. But the level of poverty there is in the country is very sad. So for me, I always say to people, you really need to trace where your phone has been made, where your minerals come from and your green cars. So it comes from the minerals, but then it comes linked to with the fashion industry. I've been doing modeling for so many years and it was always a big stress when you have to go to an event, what you're gonna wear, how you're gonna dress because everybody dressed so fabulously. And, and, and I couldn't take any more to go to buy. And uh, I decided to borrow from friends. I decided to borrow from designers. But I think it was great when platform comes like her, where you can rent your outfits. You rent and you give back. It doesn't pollute your wardrobe. You don't spend money. And uh, it's a kind of recycling. And secondly is we need to wear I love what uh, Eco Age was saying, wear more than 30 times your outfit. And it's, it's correct. We, should, we, we, we shouldn't be ashamed to wear the same outfit for an, a, a gala, for a dinner, and etc. And this one year and a half only being at home, we all learned that 60% of our wardrobe, we didn't even use it. We were all in t-shirt, in joggers, in, in flip-flop. And you really have to rethink how you're buying, how you're consuming, and, and how you're placing yourself in the fashion industry. I work with, I'm uh, very lucky that I work a lot with brands that are uh, giving back, either supporting my foundation or either supporting different foundations and really uh, looking uh, on the supply chain. But it's, 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 a big, it's, a, it's a big assignment for the fashion. You know, it's not in overnight they will change the way they're doing things we need to to keep pushing for creating awareness to push people to to um to take action and we need to give time too i think it's important to give them to the industry to reshape themselves and with the pandemic we all learn lessons and um for instance with her we we created a campaign where more than 15 powerful women donated two of their favorite outfits and we rented them and uh, some proceeds were going um, going to my to, to malaika but i really push uh, i go i give a lot of talk to students and uh, at university or schools and i always push them borrow upcycling renting wearing more than uh, than a few times and as Malaika, we're really working towards the sustainable goals with uh, the water, the, the number six sustainable goals, to education, because at Malaika, we, we build and manage a school for 370 girls, where it's a holistic curriculum. There's a huge problem in the village uh, where we're working. So all around the villages, 
We build more than 20 wells and impacting 30,000 uh, people. We grow our own food that goes back to the canteen of the school and where we teach about organic farming. There's no electricity where we're working. So we have all the solar panel um, giving uh, the green energy. And we create a brand in a rural village where it's called Ma Mama Yama Pendo, Mothers with Love, where we teach women to do sewing and we do accessorized bags, masks, um, uh, bows and uh, table napkins and etc. And we're selling them in different shops and uh, the money is going back uh, to invest it in Malaika programs because all the programs we have going back uh, to... Um, to the to the programs because all the programs are free and I love all this campaign that's been happening this year of women's uh, on International Women's Day for instance we partner with my Teresa and MT Art and uh, and all the talents six of them six of us I think we all chose a different charity where the money we're going mm -hmm. and that's where we have to give but I think who has the biggest voice in all of that is the consumer mm -hmm. the consumer has a massive voice in terms of pushing the brand where your clothes has been made, who made them, um, are you going to do only one season or two seasons of your clothing? That's where the discussion really starts and where we still have to push the agenda for the fashion. You're, you're so right. And, and, and I mean, you know, on that note, I mean, you know, genuinely, I mean, do you feel that fashion can truly be a force for good for people and the planet? Uh, Cameron, how, you know, you let's direct this question to you first can can fashion not just kind of talk the talk but actually you know walk the walk and actually really do stuff to to make great change it, it can um and we've we've been incredibly uh, fortunate privileged to to see that firsthand uh, both in east africa where uh, we started bottle top and we came, the name bottle top was because of the beautiful handmade bags made from the recycled metal tops from glass bottles um, in Nairobi, uh, where we were making the shell of our original bags and then lining them with waste leather offcuts um, in collaboration with Mulberry in Europe. Um, and then we started working in the northeast of Brazil in Bahia um, with communities of, of uh, women who were uh, working with homeless people who have been collecting uh, ring pulls from drinks cans, um, <clears throat> and we crochet them into our beautiful chainmail signature material that we use to create our collection and more recently um, in Nepal with groups of women through two local NGOs who've been rescued from human trafficking um, and in both of those in all, all three of those regions we've, we've we've been so touched to see the impact that creating real skills um, livelihoods um, ha can have on communities, um, both on the individuals and then on the wider family structure um, and on, on, on the wider community itself. Um, and that can, can then facilitate broader impact and, and that's where we then work to do additional fundraising to support grassroots health education programs in and around uh, the, the locations where we create our collections. But it's about, um, it's about taking a long-term approach and I think we always saw that from from day one is that you as a brand, you can't you can't um, I think the traditional fashion industry model of, you know, brands looking to produce as, as cheaply as possible, um, as affordably as possible is fundamentally wrong um, from the perspective that it, it, it is never really set up to, to provide long-term properly supported meaningful impact for um those those people who are in the supply chains and that's where we have to do so much work and as noella rightly said you know it has to it begins and ends with consumer consciousness because unless the consumer consciousness you know is there unless people understand that that, that everything that we're wearing has been touched by human hands you know in one way or another or in many many times um that you know we have to again humanize it all and understand the interconnectedness um and know that when fashion is structured in the right way and when the right longer term approaches are built in you know and the term slow fashion is 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 very apt here because you know fashion um you know we've we've because of the fast fashion models you know i think unfortunately um, many particularly younger generations have, have been exposed um, from an early age to these disposable prices which truly don't reflect the actual costs 
of creating garments of creating bags and accessories and you know we know that the, the people who pay for that are those in the supply chain but but we know that fashion can empower um that, that it can drive positive impact and we've been privileged um to see that both through bottle top and together band so it's about brands stepping up and getting on that journey it sure is sarah same question to you you know do, do you really feel that fashion can truly be a force for good yes 100 percent. yes of course i mean i feel like you know we're the, the whole conversation about businesses being a force for good is you know we almost no longer need to make that case anymore um i mean i would hope so anyway um and i think for fashion it's what what fashion has on top of you know the, the sort of private sector this sort of business um other businesses is a creativity i think the 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 and, and cameron mentioned that a bit earlier as well the the um the creativity and the, the that powers the whole industry i think just needs to be harnessed in the right way um and and that's very much where the strength of fashion like lies um i think the the if you want to change people's mind if you want to change perception you need to use creativity you need to amaze people you need to inspire them and i think that fashion is uniquely placed to do that and it does feel that that the creative industries as a whole are finally changing for the better um and and i think that we're we're definitely a turning point in this moment like this that have the power to actually as they change perception and upturn action at a massive scale. Um, but I guess as in terms of brands and what, what brands can or fashion professional can do, I think the the first step would be to, you know, keep an open mind and have a willingness to try and be and hold open conversations. So, you know, willingness to to try and learn from other industries, as I was saying earlier, the you know, the agriculture industry, the tech industry. Um, what can you learn from other brands? What can you learn from from customers? I think there's a there's a big there's definitely a link that's often missing of what what can you know what can customers you know bring to your brand? I think the and and Cameron again touched a little bit on uh, on this earlier. I think there's this there needs to be a point where brands you know keep and hold owners conversation about where they are and i think that's what we've been trying to do with with fashion avengers is actually create a space where where these conversations can be held and the issues can be addressed in an open way um and and you know start with the goals you know look at the goals and look at how your your business impacts the goals and 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 you know, just make a make a, a, an effort to go for your supply chains, to engage your employees, to engage your board, to engage your shareholders, your partners, and and just hold this conversation. These are not conversations that should just be happening internally. I think I think we should democratize, you know, this the, the sustainability conversation, and 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 I I think that definitely needs to happen. But we also feel that we are now at a point where where it's starting to happen more and more. Um, so it's really it's it's really nice to see. Yeah, it, it, it's amazing to see. And, and Noella, you know, you know, do you feel that you know fashion can really you know walk the talk and and, and really change? Oh yeah, I hope it's not going to be a trend. You know, I hope it's going to yes. be a long term because even for for us as a model, we're seeing more diversity, inclusion. I think fashion as a fashion anyway as a huge huge audience and a lot of resources and finance in the industry. If we can champion these differently, sustainable behavior, there's so much creativity in the industry, like we were saying, and we're embracing things like upcycling could be really exciting and will have a, a huge impact. You know, when we talk about the fashion industry, it's not only the clothes, it's about the photographer, it's about the models, it's about the journalism, the designer, all the people that are working in offices. And we can, we can all come together and really shake the industry. And we have a generation that really caring my kids, when we go to buy things, they're asking mommy how it's been made, where it has been made. So we have a generation that's asking questions and the fashion industry will have to be responsive to answer in a very ethical way and with real truth and real statistics, how they're doing and how they're doing business and how they're doing for good. So uh, we're seeing a lot of small brands emerging, making clothes with bottled water, with plastic bottle, with recycling, with reducing the waste. When we were talking with you, Sarah, how, many, how much water are we using to make jeans? 
oh, to I make think it's 1,800 pounds of, uh, for a pair of jeans alone. I mean, and yeah, and we know that more than two more than two billion people in the world don't have access to water. So we really, really have to rebalance how we we consuming, how we making things, and fashion has to act every day and for a long, long term. And we have to push to see really um, a long term agenda. And I think we need to start to push to have policy. It's very important to have guideline how it has to be made mm -hmm. and how they can do it. Yeah, so uh, definitely a call for regulation, you know, is, 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 is very important. A call action and a call regulation, very important. Absolutely. But I mean, you know, for, for the fashion industry, really to change it requires <clears throat> each and every one of us to change and to actually really remember that our purpose is in our pocket i mean you know we need to live our choices and buy our choices um sarah i mean this you know how how can people start i mean my 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 podcast is called start somewhere so you know how do people start somewhere if, if you know if, if they want to you know help the fashion industry change and be more responsible in the way they buy I mean, it's, it feels like such a big question, right? Uh, and I totally understand how sustainability, when you talk about changing the whole fashion industry, how as an individual that can feel very, very overwhelming. And it's, it's sustainability also historically has also been associated with, with, you know, more expensive products. So it's not seen as something that is necessarily accessible to, um, to a great number of people. Um, but the, the beauty about Fashion Avengers, and that's why I'm so excited about this, this campaign, is that we've, we've actually designed the whole, the whole public facing campaign around the idea that anyone can become a Fashion Avenger. Um, and this, you know, there are actually so many easy steps we can all take in our everyday life to just start being more mindful of the impact our clothes have on the planet. And it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, just, just, Throwing everything, it does definitely doesn't mean throwing everything. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> exactly, but it's, you know, just actually just taking taking a breath and just, you know, looking at your wardrobe and try to be more creative with what you already have. It can mean, you know, swapping or borrowing from, you know, your friends or your family. I mean, I literally steal all of my best friend's clothes all the time. Um, it can mean, you know, upcycling, adapting the items that you have yourself. Um, it can mean if you do want to buy something, could it be vintage? Could it be secondhand? Could it be from the second, you know, the charity shops? Could you look at, you know, ethical, you know, labels and sustainable, uh, sustainable retailers? Uh, you know, pe brands that already have that that sort of conscious and that you know mindfulness in the way that they produce their products. Um, I think it's there's many ways you can do it, and um, I would definitely invite all of um, everyone who's watching us today to go and find out more on the Global Goals website. It's globalgoals.org. You can find out more about the campaign, and um, we have a, a set of beautifully, beautifully, um, beautiful photographs taken by uh, Rankin a few weeks ago, and. The, we really want to encourage people, especially as we emerge from lockdown, to to just take, yeah, pause. Pause and think, do I need it? Do I really need it? Or or actually, could I just be more creative? And could I, could I just try something different? Just actually, the first step is always the hardest, right? Um, try always. something. Always. Cameron, your very rapid fire top tip for those who want to start somewhere. Um, I think Sarah really covered all the bases beautifully there. Um, I think f for me, it's vote, vote for the future that you want to see in the world, you know. Um, so spend, spend those, um, those, those pounds, euros, dollars um, or beyond wisely on things that really matter that are made by brands that, that genuinely care as much as you do about the planet and the future that we want to see for the next generations. Absolutely. Noella, your rapid fire top tip for those who want to start somewhere. I think everybody, everything has been said, but uh, yeah, you know, coming out of lockdown, we all want to wear our heels, look fabulous, look great, but let's dig in our wardrobe, choose the, the clothes, match it, recycle, borrow, go to buy vintage, go to rent, and just buy a few items that you really need and you know that you will it will last for a long time. I'm a big believer to buy in high quality in quality clothes. 
that can last a long time and really see the label or you can wash it or you can maintain it and buy things that you can non-stop match. I love to wear, I love to buy white t-shirt and then I know that it's going to be so easy to wear with dread, with a shirt or a skirt or whatever you want and really think before you, you're spending and soon it's going to be the sale. People are going to go crazy. They're going to want to buy everything. But like Sarah said, we need to pause and really see, do we need it? And uh, do, do I need to put more things in the wardrobe? And I think once in a while, do a big cleaning of your wardrobe. Give to charity clothes, the clothes you don't use, or give to, to, your, to your friends. A recycling start, I think, from a wardrobe. Absolutely. Very good top tip. And then for those who do want to have a rummage in the wardrobe, wanting to be a fashion avenger, take a photograph of yourself, hashtag it Fashion Avenger, and do tag at Marie Claire UK. Thank you so much to my amazing panel of Fashion Avengers. Please come and join us and also be a Fashion Avenger. Have a great afternoon and thank you for being with us. Thank you, Sarah, for moderating the session with such amazing energy and enthusiasm. And thank you to Sarah, Noella and Cameron for such an upbeat and optimistic conversation. I was really struck by Sarah's story about how Stella McCartney described fashion as farming and so is deeply linked to the environment that helps create its products. And I love Cameron's point that the global goals are a universal route map that offer brands a robust way to self-assess against their values. Um, but perhaps it feels like the ultimate issue for the sector was offered by Noella, namely that the consumer has the, the biggest impact and voice in shaping the direction that fashion brands take. If you have thoughts or any points or anything you want to say about any of these points, do tweet us at, at cogx underscore festival or use the hashtag cogx 2021. I should also mention that cogx would not be possible this year without the support of the festival sponsors, Accenture, BT, Quantum Black and Visa. The next session will start at 5 p.m. I believe and is going to be right in the Cog House wheelhouse, cogx wheelhouse. It will look at how nature tech can help scale up nature-based solutions. Uh, Lucy Armand from Nature uh, for Climate will be back joining us once again to introduce this session.